Michael Bean played leading roles in two cult films, The Terminator and Aliens, and it seemed that his success in Hollywood was predestined. But despite an impressive start in the 80s, his career declined. Like many famous actors of his time, Bean started his career by appearing in commercials and TV movies. In 1977, he made his debut in the series Logan's Run, where his character had only one line. Alert, runner headed for quadrant four, intercept. <laughs> As the actor recalled, he was so nervous that after delivering the first sentence, he forgot the second one. Then, after a pause, he pulled himself together and continued, repeating the line again. So yeah, I managed to get through those two lines and that was my first time on film, being recalled with a laugh years later. Nevertheless, the actor was noticed and soon he signed a contract with agent Ed Lamato, who over the years worked with such stars as Richard Gere, Mel Gibson, and Michelle Pfeiffer. Michael was not yet a star, but he soon played two significant roles in the comedies Coach and Wild Boar. And in 81, he went to New York to join noir film legend Lauren Bacall on set. This was Bean's first Hollywood film, called The Fan, where he played a record salesman who became obsessed with a 50-year-old actress, gradually turning her life into a nightmare. The Fan was initially planned with a psychological bent, but after the success of Brian De Palma's thriller Razor, its direction was changed, making the script a more brutal and straightforward story about a maniac. The film was released during a difficult time, when American society was actively discussing the stalking stories of Jodie Foster and Jacqueline Bisset, and Beatles fans were still recovering from the loss of John Lennon, who was ambushed at home by unstable Mark Chapman. It is assumed that this became the key factor in the failure of the fan. Allegedly, it too blatantly sprinkled salt on fresh wounds and viewers did not want to relive the unpleasant experience. In the end, the film, which cost $9 million, brought in only three at the domestic US box office. This was Bean's first major failure on the big screen, but it was followed by the most important meeting of his life. The actor met emerging director James Cameron. Nowadays, many say that Cameron is a despot on set, but Bean enjoyed the director's authoritarian character. Michael explained this by saying that, unlike actors with inflated egos, he's not afraid to listen to critical comments about his performance. Cameron, in turn, also appreciated the actor's patience, giving him the following characterization. To me, he was the quintessential man, expressing the male values I admire, strength, honesty, a sense of duty, conviction. In general, the duo worked well together on the set of The Terminator. Michael not only followed James' instructions implicitly, but also brought his own suggestions. For instance, in the original script, his character, Kyle Reese, was supposed to answer the psychologist's questions while a camera mounted on the ceiling was filming. Bean decided his character should realize he's being watched, and raising his head, start shouting words into the camera lens. Watching The Terminator now, it's easy to think of this as a flawless film, destined for success. But back then, in the distant year of 1984, this was not the case. According to Michael, the film made a decent $38 million, which, however, pales in comparison if we recall that in the same year, the family film The Karate Kid easily passed the $90 million mark. Nevertheless, the collaboration between Bean and Cameron began, and two years later, the actor again starred in the director's sci-fi action movie, Aliens. And three years later, he played the third most significant role in the deep sea fantasy with revolutionary CGI effects, The Abyss. By the second half of the 80s, Bean had become one of the brightest and most promising young stars of Hollywood and seemed to be an actor who was just about to reach the peak of the film Olympus. However, this did not happen. The film Rampage, in which Michael played one of the leading roles and which was directed by the outstanding director William Friedkin, touched on the topical issues of capital punishment for particularly serious crimes. In the actor's filmography, Rampage is listed right after Aliens and is dated 1987 but this date is purely formal. On the eve of the film's release, the production company Dino De Laurentiis, which was supposed to handle the distribution of this court drama, they went bankrupt, and the film was shelved, where it gathered dust for a long five years, until the Miramax company released it in limited release in the US. Rampage was also sadly neglected in terms of physical copies. The film still cannot be found in decent quality and only exists on VHS tapes. After Rampage, Bean experienced another failure. He starred in a film aptly titled Time Bomb, which became a so-called box office bomb, meaning it failed at the box office. This film contains allusions to the Terminator, for example, a man and a girl hiding in the city from bad guys going through the same stages of relationship, from distrust to attraction, and then full merging in a hotel room. 
There's also a quote from The Terminator. Bean's character says, You just do what I say. Exactly what I say. Do you understand me? Do exactly what I say. Exactly. But unfortunately, that didn't make this film The Terminator. Bean, by the way, had doubts about the casting of Time Bomb since the producers cast British singer and actress Patsy Kensett as the psychiatrist. Although Patsy was like, darling, she was sexy and fun, you know? She was supposed to be a psychiatrist and she was 20. And I thought, that's strange casting. Michael recalled his impressions. It's interesting, but Bean's character voices roughly the same thoughts in one of the scenes of the movie. You don't look like an analyst. What do analysts look like? Old, beard, Belgium. Finally, Bean's third major failure in his solo career was the film Navy Seals. On the surface, the project seemed promising. A budget of $20 million, support from the US Navy, and a whole cast of charismatic actors like Charlie Sheen and Bill Paxton. But in reality, things did not go as well. According to Michael, most actors on set thought they were shooting something akin to Top Gun, a serious story about military operations. But as things progressed, the director began adding in poor taste comedic elements, some of which truly created an almost schizophrenic impression. Sorry guys, but I cannot be a part of this funeral procession. See you later! After a series of failures with these and other films, Bean reverted back to supporting roles, managing to score some memorable performances the villain Ringo in the highly rated western Tombstone, and the commander of the special forces in the blockbuster The Rock. This modest success, however, was overshadowed by the fact that around that same time, Michael missed out on at least two projects that could have given his flagging career a powerful boost. In the first case, we're talking about a film from the then little known director Brian Singer. He had sent Bean the script for the convoluted neo-noir detective film, The Usual Suspects. Judging by the actor's later comments, it was precisely these two circumstances, an unknown director and a tightly twisted plot that put the actor off. I read his script. I didn't understand it. I was confused by it. It's kind of a confusing story if you're not paying attention, and I'd probably had a few drinks and thought, I don't get this, man, I don't get it, and threw it to the side. It was a huge mistake. Bean's regrets. As we know, the film The Usual Suspects became a box office hit, won two Oscars, and solidly established itself on the IMDb's list of best films. Brian Singer subsequently became one of the most sought-after directors of the 90s and 2000s. As for the second project, the responsibility here lay not so much with the actor as with the producers. This was the movie Alien 3. This project was prepared for so long, so many directors and script versions were changed, that to tell about it, even in a condensed form, would require a separate clip. It is known, however, that at one stage the star of the first two films, Sigourney Weaver, refused to play Ellen Ripley for creative and financial reasons, and the second most important character, Corporal Hicks, played by Bean, could have become the main character of the film. But then, they managed to come to an agreement with Weaver, and Hicks' participation on the contrary was reduced to an episode. In the prologue, a xenomorph burst from his chest and the corporal died without getting a minute of screen time. When Bean found out about this, as well as the fact that a dummy with his image was being used without his permission, he was enraged. He threatened to sue the production company and in the end, the parties resolved the matter by allowing the director to use Michael's photo, and the actor himself received a substantial sum of money for it. This act was seen as downright stinginess in the industry. Later, Bean regretted his behavior as the director of Alien 3 was David Fincher. Like Brian Singer, Fincher became one of the most successful Hollywood directors a few years later. In the mid-2000s, Bean had firmly entrenched himself in series and films that, by passing wide theatrical release, were released directly on television and media. The exception was Robert Rodriguez's film Planet Terror, and could have been, but was not, the film by Russian director Alexei Bobanov, American. In it, Michael was supposed to play the lead role. In 2003, Bobanov was one of the most famous Russian directors, the creator of the popular duology Brother. Having familiarized himself with his films, Bean accepted the offer to play an American broker who, having invested millions in a Russian company, soon discovers that it has burned out along with his money. To retrieve his lost investments, Michael's character travels to Russia. There, however, he begins to abuse alcohol and hits rock bottom. Filming started in New York, and initially everything went great. 
But upon arriving in Noriska, North Siberia, Bean seemingly affirming the old adage that life imitates art could not withstand the harsh Arctic conditions, went on a heavy binge and disrupted the shooting. In the end, the actor was fired and the American project was closed. Whether the actor's previous failures were related to his addiction, or it was a one-off case, it's hard to say. In any case, the streak of bad luck for Michael did not end there, and he had issues with two more projects in the following years. One of those was Avatar, a revolutionary 3D blockbuster by his old acquaintance James Cameron. According to Michael, James showed him preliminary material and promised him the role of the central villain, but then also invited Sigourney Weaver to Avatar. Two actors from Aliens in Avatar? That's overkill. Cameron decided that when coming to the cinema, the viewer would be looking at Navi and simultaneously recalling the Xenomorphs. To avoid cognitive dissonance, the director preferred to cast actor Stephen Lang as the villain. And about Bean, he said he might film the next time. It's a good idea to put him into a performance capture character in Avatar 4 or 5. I'll have to think about that. But no promises. In any case, I do look forward to working with him again," Cameron said. Another project was Alien 5. It was the dream film of young director Neil Blomkamp, known for his socio-scientific hit District 9. In 2015, it became known that the director planned to continue the Alien franchise, ignoring all films made after the second part and to show the further story of Ripley, Hicks, and Newt. The main roles in the new blockbuster were supposed to be played by Weaver and Bean. This is also indicated by concept art posted online. However, at the same time, Ridley Scott, who shot the very first film about alien monsters and released the prequel Prometheus in 2012, wanted to return to the franchise and shoot the film Alien Covenant. Although chronologically and casting-wise the projects did not intersect, the action took place in the same universe. The studio 20th Century Fox naturally gave the green light to Scott, putting forward the respected and influential veteran and Blomkamp was left without funding. For a while, there was talk that Alien 5 was still in development, and Bean even said in an interview that the film would be shot and he would return to the image of Hicks. But in 2017, 20th Century Fox officially closed the project, and Blomkamp finally said goodbye to the dream of his own film about xenomorphs. As for Bean, his schedule is filled with low-budget films and appearances in high-rated TV series such as The Walking Dead and The Mandalorian. Judging by various interviews, the actor quit drinking and advocates for a sober lifestyle and also founded a production company, directed and played in two thrillers. As his old acquaintance and colleague Cameron says, Major stardom passed him by, but that's not the point. He's done great work in many films over the years and is well loved and respected for a few iconic characters. Who can forget Johnny Ringo and Tombstone? Bean himself, after various failures, mistakes, and setbacks, has already learned to take a punch, and even formulated an aphorism that supports him in a difficult moment. I'd been disappointed too many times to be depressed for more than 24 hours. This has been the story of Michael Bean. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, goodbye for now, and we'll see you soon.